Okay, so what is there really to say about this episode? Um, more of the last episode? Nothing, really? Kind of... I don't want to say boring because it wasn't a boring episode. I did enjoy it. I've enjoyed all the episodes in this anime so far. I found them to be pretty fun for the most part. But this was another one of those sideline filler episodes, which I know people are going to dislike intently. But it is what it is. Um, I assume they're just dragging out the plot because after we beat the next um, peril, which he was shown in the preview for the next episode, um, after we defeat him, it'll be on to fighting Kinemaru and Riku. And then I guess that will be finishing out the 24 episodes. I was really hoping for some more substance to these villains. So I'm hoping the last two at least provide something. As opposed to the four perils. Because they have been a massive disappointment. And I've made that opinion well known. Ugh. But. The good part about these filler episodes, as I mentioned in the last video, the twin demons were from the original. Um, but this episode featured two demons known as Pond and Snake Demon, if I remember their names correctly. And they are actually from the manga, not the anime. It was some of the stuff cut out of the manga, I mean out of the anime that was in the manga, uh, around the time when Inuasha was learning the absorption abilities related to his dragon scale Tetsaiga. Uh, big shout out to Axel Beats for that knowledge there because I did not know. <laughs> so I'll give credit where credit is due. Um, so yeah, I found that to be a really interesting, um, a really interesting uh, little side note there. So that made it the fact that it was just sideline filler a little bit more bearable and um, kind of less irritating since it was kind of like an homage to the original work. So I will give it a pass on that. I do think that was kind of neat. But as far as the episode goes, Cessnet opens up Cessna playing the violin and then Toa thinking back about their relationship and everything, how she pretty much does all the time. Uh, then it cuts to a scene where Motoha is burning the pancakes because she can't cook and that makes two of us. So, Motoha is awesome. <laughs> um, but, you know, after uh, um, Toa shows her how to how to cook them properly, uh, she starts to eat them and begins choking. And that's when she starts running off towards the pond. But, noticing how gunky the water looks... Uh, Toa stops her and that's when Motoha sees a bird passing over get eaten by the pond and everybody thinks she's crazy so they leave her there while they go off in search of their own thing um, if I remember correctly it was more about trying to find information on the dream butterfly but then Motoha goes back to Jubei's place and We cut over to Setsuna and Toa talking to, I think his name is Sushui. Uh, you find out that the pond used to be clear, but it became tainted by a demon. And that's when they realize that Motoha actually was telling the truth about what she had seen. Then he tells them about how a sage had purified it once and left the herbs to be used again in case the need ever arose, which it has. That would have been kind of neat to see a flashback or maybe a comparison or like a descendant of the kids we see later if it had been one of their ancestors or their father had been the one to um, purify the lake and died in the process. I think that would have been pretty cool, but no, he was just a random guy that got you know, killed by the lake because he got too close to it. But along that, as they're walking back towards the pond, they notice this kid trying to go over to the lake to fight to avenge his father. Sister's trying to stop him. That's when 
Cessna steps in and stops the kid. And she doesn't really outright admit it, but you can tell it's because she's starting to feel a connection to Toa. And she kind of senses that between the two of them, I think. And I, that, to me, is probably the reason why she was so eager to jump in and save the boy from doing something so stupid. But they're invited back to have dinner at their home where their mother retells a story about what had happened and then tells them with the herbs and the sage and everything. And then we find out that their father had used to be a Biwa player and that he had died at the pond one day by the demon. And so Cessna starts playing the violin and they start crying because it reminds them of their father. Then during the night, Cessna goes outside and Toa wakes up and starts talking <clears throat> excuse me and this horse says something really interesting um Cessna says that well Toa apologizes for falling asleep on her like that by herself but then Cessna says that she it was okay that she can't remember a time she could fall asleep so is this hinting at the fact that the theory floating around is that their memories have been erased by said dream butterfly. That's why there's no real understanding of their father, a Sashomu or anything. And that could explain why everybody else fails to bring up the fact of where in the hell are the OG lords, you know? Sashomu, Kagome, Inuasha, the beast that could come through here and just... I don't know. I need some freaking answers. I'm you've been kept me in suspense. I need to know what the hell happened, to everybody. You know? But it seems to be dropping breadcrumbs that maybe this theory about the dream butterfly erasing their memories of these people from at least the Shoshomaru seems to be somewhat prevalent. I mean no, even though Miyoga mentioned Shoshomaru again, so obviously it's not everybody's forgotten about them. But just makes it all the more suspicious that nobody else seems to want to mention anything about the situation. I don't get it. But anyways, we see Motoha cleaning up Jubei's place with Takeuchi over there being a prick. Like, aha, you missed a spot. Aha, this place is still dirty. Just being a little prick. Which I actually find to be rather amusing. But I love Motoha, so I, you know, I'm on her side. <laughs> but... Uh, he tells her she can't bring in any bounties. The least she can do to repay their advance payment is to help clean up the place. So it still raises the question as to why was she given the advance payment? And you know, I mean, obviously because she what she wants the money, but why does she want the money? Is she in debt with somebody else and really needed to pay them off? And now she's in debt with this guy. Is it like a credit card, credit loan situation? I don't know. I'm hoping that's something that they will. Uh, touch on later in more detail but Motoha finds the girls the twin girls down at the pond the next day and starts complaining because she said she was worried about them that's when they confront the demon and it's a giant snake wrapped around in in the water so Motoha decides she wants to get in on the bounty and goes to fight it but gets hit by a toxic misc and is knocked unconscious um well, not necessarily unconscious, but she's kind of immobilized for the moment. So then, te te Tetsna. <laughs> Tetsna and Toa start to fight on on their own. And then a toxic miss also affects Setsna, but it leaves Toa unaffected. So Toa goes in and starts throwing hands. Then another demon appears, which is the actual pond demon. So apparently it's a snake demon that resides in the pond who tries to protect the pond and then the pond is its own entity as well and as they're fighting uh you know motoha not motoha um uh, toa seems to be getting the upper hand but then the pond demon releases a toxic shower some like water poison water or whatever and that is what um starts to make toa become a bit unresponsive but it doesn't affect setsuna and so Miyoga makes the mention that, hey, well, there's the Shomaru's daughter, so they must have resistance to certain poisons and such. So it was a nice throwback there to, to, to the OG goat, Sashomaru. So they decide that since they're each immune to, to 
each half of the attacks, they split them up. And so Toa decides to take on the Snake Demon, leaving the Pond Demon for Setsna. So Setsna uses this to advantage, uses her Cyclone attack, and throws the herbs at the Sage had left behind. Just, you know, barely brushing Motoha, who was barely paralyzed over there. No big deal, right? Uses the attack, throws the herbs at the Pond Demon to purify and destroy him, and then... Setsuna charges through the toxic mist that is un she is unaffected by and kills off the snake demon, returning the pond back to normal. And then the kids come down there and then Setsuna plays the violin for him again. Oh no, it was a really it was it was a fine episode. It was it was fun. It was uh nothing too great or crazy really happened. But like I said, it was just nice. I, I was okay with it because it was kind of an homage to the original work. Um, and kind of getting some more feedback on the abilities of Shishomaru's daughters was also really nice. But I would really like to see the main antagonist get back involved. The Four Perils and Kinemaru. And then obviously Riku. But in the preview we do see what appears to be... Koton, I think that's his name, the last of the four pearls, releasing another demon to go fight the girls for him. So it'll at least be nice, if, even if he doesn't fight, to at least see some more actual canon episodes in terms of progressing the actual plot. Uh, again, unless they decide they're going to make this longer than one season, which they probably will. Um... Because its ratings are actually like a top 10, maybe even top 5 in the TV spots in Japan right now. Up there with One Piece and Jujutsu Kaisen. So it's it's doing really good in Japan. So they very well might make it more than one season. I almost certainly grant you that they will. But we'll see what happens. Um, but what did you think? Um... Did you enjoy, are you enjoying these filler episodes, or are you just ready to get back to the main canon stuff? And how are you, and as far as the filler episodes go, are you enjoying the fact that they're throwing homages to the original anime and the original manga? And, um, what do you think about them getting, uh, poison resistance? Or, are they becoming too OP, or are you fine with it because they are Shishomaru's daughters? Um, to shout out Axel Beats once more, uh, and to echo his sentiment here, it was a bit of a missed opportunity to not have Toa try to absorb the the poison all at once, kind of like a Moroku situation, and find out that there's a limit to what she can handle at once, to kind of put a limiter on her retardedly overpowered abilities. Because every time you turn around, she's getting more and more OP, she's like one punch man up in this bitch. But, you know, uh, we'll see what happens with it. I expect them to eventually, now that it's getting really successful, to kind of start bunkering down, especially when we get to the Kinemanu fight. Well, you know, let me know what you think. What do you expect to happen now that we're finally getting back into canon? Are you excited? Uh, how much more and more episodes do you think we're going to have of the Four Perils before we get to Kinemanu? And what do you think is going on behind the scenes with Riku? Also... What do you think Motoha deal with the advance payments she was given? Does she owe somebody else money? Or is she putting that out there for information to try and find her parents? There's a lot to, uh, to be answered here. And there's not a lot of answers. There's not even a lot of breadcrumbs, really. But throw your theories down there. Comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one.